Morning, guys. This is for Bob. Um, Bob here has asked about what mic I use. Um, first thing I want to say, this setup here isn't the cheapest setup, but I got it because of the adjustments I can do to the microphone. But I'll go through a few options here. Um, this is my microphone, um, which is stage performance mic. Um, as you can see, the, not the cheapest mics, but at the same time, robust, reliable, um, which is why I bought it. The mixing desk I've got here allows me to adjust all the sounds, which means I can deal with some of the echo issues that you get inside a confined space. Personally, I wouldn't recommend this mixer um, because it does get these earthing issues. Um, now, the problem with it being on the USB and the way it's designed, not a lot you can do about it. So it can play up sometimes. You get like a hissing sound sometimes and you can't clarify it, can't get it out of it. Um, it's one of the faults that people have brought up about these. So personally, I would say don't use that mixing desk because I've had it myself and then it's took me months to get the thing to work properly again. Um, the mic stands, you can just get off eBay. Uh, the one I have, this is actually the same one as mine. It's, it's only like $5, five pounds. Um, very, very cheap. Does the job. Only thing I will say is be aware that these clips aren't ex well, Where are you? These clips aren't exactly the best. So what I do with mine is I use, like, for example, here, a little block of wood like this, just to give it some protection because it's on a glass table. Um, so it stops it damaging the table. Personally, I would like to hang it from the ceiling, but I've actually got a oscillating fan on the ceiling as well. So <laughs> there's not a lot of space to put it which is why it sort of sits between my two monitors here. But it's it's not the best um, solution. But in all honesty, if you're actually doing something where you wanted to adjust this yourself, I would recommend getting this and then just using it as the arm, using it as a boom arm and making some stabilization framework for it. You know, for example, whether you bolt it to the roof, just adjust the angle um, and make some sort of framework to extend it out. But it depends how far you want to go. I mean, myself, I'm looking at it because obviously I spend a lot of time on these videos. So for me, it's worth doing. Uh, but that's, that's it. They're not expensive, nothing fancy. does have multiple movements. We'll go up, we'll go down. You know, there's two, like an arm movement. You've got two. You've got the pivot from the, the table to the middle of the joint, but it'll go up and down and around. The only thing I would recommend is possibly having one with a swivel on it a bit depending how you're using it, because if it was up on the ceiling, when I'd finished recording with the audio, I could actually push it away, you know, so it's sort of in line with the monitor rather than in your face. Um, now, as Bob was mentioning, it's more to do with Skype and things, and if it is, I do recommend having a look at um, Blue Yeti, which their website's currently playing up, um, but Blue Yeti put make these really good studio mics, um, which is the one I'll be buying next. Um, I'm going to replace all this with one of these. Um, they have a lot of good reviews, as you can see here, nearly five stars. But at the same time, it's 230 euros is a lot of money for just doing Skype calls, which is why I'll get on to what I'd recommend if it is just for that, Bob, or if you are actually looking at doing this, I would recommend going for a Yeti. But you may be better off if it's for Skype, something like this, where it's actually designed for conference calls. Um, because that will actually f mean that you can get the sound from all over the room. Not everybody has to be in view for it to work. Um, but they're a bit tinny sometimes, which is what you got to bear in mind. They're designed for conference calls. They're not designed for uh, clear audio in the sense of doing a voiceover or something. They're designed so that you can go in a office space and everybody can hear it. You know, so it's clear so people can hear, but it's not the not the best option if you want to do, say, YouTube videos. If I was going for YouTube, I would actually definitely say the Blue Yeti is the one that a lot of people are recommending. And the reason I say that is myself, I'm looking at it myself. 
Um, there's three different types. The studio one is the expensive one, and then there's some cheaper options. Personally, I think investing in a good mic if you're doing studio stuff is worth doing. As you're probably aware, I've got probably about 2,000 videos just on this channel, but in all, it's probably around 4,000 videos on YouTube alone. So it is worth the investment if you're doing that sort of stuff. But if it's just for around the house, just for Skype, um, you may be better off with something like this where you can leave it on the table and everybody there can be heard, which is one of the reasons you use these um, like I said, they were often a little bit tinny, but the, you can hear the voice, but it does pick up other things in the room, but not as bad, not as bad, because they've, they've normally got some filtering built in, which is why they sound a little bit tinny, because it's picking up mainly the voice. It's not picking up the sounds of the birds or stuff like that. It's not looking for that. It's looking for the voice. So I hope that helps. Um, thanks for watching.